hello everyone <clears throat> i hope all of you are doing fine so uh, this is uh, the topic for today's class is chapter 4 migration so basically uh, the goal for today's class is to understand what exactly is the term migration mean the causes of migration the types of migration and how does migration affect us so that is the goal for today's class so please ensure that you keep this goal at the back of your mind as we proceed with the video so let us begin now what is migration now as you can see migration is the movement of people from one place to another for a certain period of time so when people move from one place to another so when people move from one place to another for a certain period of time that is known as migration so it is the movement of people from one place to another for a certain period of time now the second term is migrants who are known as migrants the people who migrate in this manner so the people who migrate from one place to another for a certain period of time are known as migrants so that is the difference between migration migration is the movement of people from one place to another and and migrants are people who move from one place to another for a certain period of time now there are many reasons for people to migrate some migrate uh, with their own choice some migrate um, you know uh, forcefully so those are there are many many different reasons for people to migrate some could be voluntary meaning by their own choice and some can be involuntary meaning they're forced to move from their place so let us learn about migration more in detail now what are the causes of migration please understand and do not get confused with the term causes here means reasons so now why do people migrate what are the reasons for people to migrate so let us understand the different reasons for people to migrate the first reason being economic from the term it's economic here meaning something related to money uh, the well-being of the people so the my the movement of people when people migrate in search of job or to pursue a career that type of migration or the movement of people in search of job opportunities or to pursue a career that type of migration is known as economic migration second type of migration is social migration now what is social migration migration social migration here means something to do with society something to do with family friends from the word social so when people migrate for being closer to the family when they want to be close to the family or their friends or to or you know uh, for a better standard of living that type of migration is known as social migration so th that's the second migration the third type of migration is political migration when people move to escape war or a very political uh, you know um, persecution meaning um, uh, not a good treatment to people by the government so when people want to escape such political conflict and war and move to some other place that type of that movement of people is known as political migration the next being your environmental causes when people migrate from an area which is prone to natural disasters like floods frequently affected by earthquakes or volcanoes and they people move to some other place to escape natural disasters like floods and volcanoes and earthquake this type of movement of migration is known as environmental migration moving to next The push factors of migration now let us understand what are the different push factors of migration so first let us define what are push factors please remember push factors are forceful factors that force people to migrate they are negative in nature meaning they're very discouraging demotivating and are mostly associated with the place of origin of the migrant if suppose I am the migrant so if suppose i am the migrant and i belong to this country india so what could be the push factors of um of, uh, for me um you know lack of job opportunity or job opportunities in india could be a forceful factor for me to move to some other country uh, you know a lot of civil war political unstability religious i don't have the freedom to practice religion the shortage of food or medical care facilities are not very good so these factors which a forceful meaning or negative in nature that encourages me to you know move to some other country such factors are known as 
push factors meaning they push me to move out from my country and move to some other country meaning they're very much negative in nature they you know discourage people from living there rather they encourage people to move out from there so these are all negative factors which upset which encourage people to move to some other place because of this lack of job opportunities civil war it could be religious intolerance shortage of food and poor medical care the, the, so that is what is push factors you must learn the definition of push push factors along with the three uh, you know name of the push factors now what are pull pull factors just the opposite pull factor meaning something that pulls you something that encourages you a positive factor that attracts people that attracts people to leave their home and move to a new country so a factor that is very enticing attractive in nature that allows us that encourages us to move to that place it's very attracting a positive one so that factor which are very positive and encouraging us to move to that place are known as pull factors so what are some of the pull factors pull factors or are, uh, are could be a better job opportunities a freedom to a political freedom no political persecution ill treatment to this nothing is there good medical facilities education qualities are really good and security social security so these factors with good opportunities of job freedom to practice or follow any political or freedom to practice any religion good medical facilities available education quality and uh, opportunities to research are uh, you know uh, available properly and the social security of the people so that's factors are such factors are known as pull factors something that encourages and pull factors are always related to the destination country so please make sure you are very much clear with what a push push meaning a negative factor it is a negative factor meaning it uh, it discourages people to live and push factors are always from the home country the country we belong to the origin country like i said india let's take for example india okay and pull factors are always positive in nature very attractive enticing and they are always to destination country where we are moving to Okay, let's say for example, USC. Alright, so push factors in India, lack of job opportunities, no proper medical facilities, you know, political instability. So because of which I want to leave India and move to America because America has a lot of pull factors, meaning factors like better medical, better medical facilities, good job opportunities, standard of living is high, education quality is better. So with that, that is the difference between push and pull factors. I hope you are clear. Moving to the next, the different types of migration. So let us understand the different types of migration. Start with the first, immigration. From the word itself i it is very important that you focus on this word i immigration meaning is the process of people coming in again i so immigration here means process of people coming in from elsewhere into another country okay for example let's say a lot of um you know america um, you know americans moving to india Americans, so the this process of Americans moving to India is known as immigration and when Americans are moving they would be known as immigrants so such type of migrants people who migrate into some other country will be known as immigrants the second being emigration emigration e again exit emigration is the process of people leaving leaving means to exit exit their home country and move to a new country okay and when people migrate leaving the home country and going to some other country they would be known as emigrants okay so that is the difference between immigration and emigration immigration means to move in emigration means to move out the third type of migration is rural urban migration from the word itself you should be able to define rural urban meaning movement of people from rural areas to urban areas now as you know urban areas are very 
I uh, you know have a lot of factors that attract the rural people to come to urban area and work. Urban areas will have better medical f- facilities, a lot of job opportunities, good education. So, you know, that really excites and uh, it acts as a, you know, encouraging factor, a pull factor for people from rural to move to urban. So when people from rural area move to urban area, that type of migration is known as rural, rural urban migration. Moving to the fourth urban urban now sometimes it is always not important that migration has to take from rural to urban sometimes migration can also mig- uh, you know take place from rural area to another rural area because one rural uh, urban area has better opportunities so people might, might want to go to that urban area rather than staying in their own urban area so migration can also take place from urban to urban as well so when people move from urban area one urban area to another urban area such type of migration is known as urban to urban migration and these type of migration which takes place from urban to urban area of the same country that is why they are known as internal meaning they are occurring within the same country or the region so those are the four types of migration now there are many more now there are some other types of migration let's have a look at the other types of migration the first being intercontinental Meaning, it's a movement of people across from one continent to another. For example, from Korea, which is in the continent of Asia, people can move to Brazil, which is in the continent of South America. So, intercontinental, inter meaning from moving from one continent to another. Whereas, intra meaning from this in the same continent. Okay, in the same continent. All right. Third is your regional or internal migration is the movement of people from one place to another within the same region, continent or the country. For example, people moving from Mumbai to Delhi, which is in the same country. All right. So that type of migration which takes place in the same country or the same region or the continent is known as a regional or internal migration. Now the next is the forced migration, which is also known as involuntary, meaning you've not volunteered yourself to move rather you've been forced to move so when does such migration take place movement of people under compulsion when people are forced because of threat to their life a lot of war natural calamities political conflict when people feel unsafe to live in that place rather they feel they have to move otherwise it's a threat to their life so that such migration which takes place without any element of choice they don't have a choice to stay rather they're forced to leave that country and or the region and move to somewhere else that type of migration is known as forced or involuntary migration where there's no element of choice involved rather people are forced to move next return migration from the term it's a return meaning is a voluntary return of migrants to the original place after they outlive the reasons for which they left for example let's say people from india let's say uh, from india people had actually let's say you know many years back maybe people had migrated to america to work as doctors or engineers and now they feel like you know it is time for them to go back to their country now they've you know, they've earned money they have fulfilled what they the reason for them to move they've achieved a political uh, career or any kind of career that they wanted to indulge into now when they're satisfied when they feel that they've achieved whatever for whatever reason they had left india and the time now it's time for them to move back such migration is known as return migration when people migrate to the original place after they outlive the reasons for which they left meaning the reason why they have left now they're fulfilled now they're back to their country and the last one here being illegal from the word it's a illegal meaning when you don't have the permission to enter that country or region but still you enter so such migration becomes illegal if people do not have the permission of the country they are entering into so if you're trying to enter into pakistan enter into pakistan china india but you don't have the permission to then you'll be known as illegal migrants so these are your different types of migration now so we've learned about what is migration we learned about the causes of migration or the reasons why people migrate and we've even learned about the different types of migration now we need to learn about the impact meaning how does migration affect impact means effects so please do not get confused impact means effects 
so let's understand how does migration affects us so let's first learn about the destination country so how does migration affect on the destination country it is very important that you know what is destination country and what is home country home country meaning the play the country that you belong to meaning your original your country of origin whereas destination meaning where you're moving to okay where you're moving to for example origin india now you're planning to go to japan and work so japan becomes a destination country whereas india becomes the home country so let us learn about the effects of migration on the destination meaning destination mean country meaning country where we are going to so how do they uh, you know how do they get affected because of migration so they have categorized into two first let's start with the positive impact how do they benefit um when there are a lot of people moving to their country how do they benefit so the first is cheap labor cheap labor here means migrants when people migrate you know they are ready to work with you know a very small wage skill migrants are also often happy to work on a small salary so that is the reason how you know the destination country will benefit because you know they have a lot of people who migrated from other country and who are willing to do you know um, you know willing to work at a very low rate so that's a benefit to them so that is the first positive impact of destination country cheap labor they get a lot of cheap labor to work in their country second skilled labor most of the migrants sometimes you know people who migrant migrate to their destination country are very talented they are very highly skilled so they contribute a lot to the knowledge and production and well-being of that country so this can be a positive aspect for example in silicon valley in Amer united states of america is dominated by asians especially indians so that is a benefit to the united states of america because there's so many asians working there and they're contributing to a lot of skills to the united states of america so that can be a positive factor and the third one being cultural diversity when a lot of people move in to some other country there's a lot of diversity and diversity is very important because diversity helps culture and traditions to loosen the grip on racism you know people learn a lot about other ways of living people learn a lot about appreciating humanity they learn about each other's culture and tradition so in this way a society will grow and you know achieve a peaceful harmony in the society which is very very important so these are the three positive impact of migration on the destination country meaning the country where people are moving to so at the same time with the positive impact there are a lot of negative impacts as well so the destination country will have a lot of other negative impact the first being loss of job because there's so many people moving into the country the locals will have to suffer because you know the a lot of people have come from out they're working and locals will might you know lose a lot of jobs they might not have uh, facilities to work because the uh, you know immigrants are taking a lot of their jobs so that can be a big big problem and second it could be a lot of racism and discrimination because there's so many people coming from different cultures who speak different languages so they might not behave like locals and they might not be accepted in the communities and this can lead to a lot of tension in the society social pressure because there's so many people moving into the destination country so there can be you know problems like housing problem health education many other facilities like water supply sanitation electricity can be a big problem so this can be put a lot of pressure on the destination country when they have to you know um, make sure that the resources are available for everyone to their own people at the same time people who come to work in their country breakdown of culture and tradition because there's so many people who've moved in tradition and cultures are negatively modified because of diversity you know so many people from different you know culture and customs and tradition coming in so there could be a lot of erosion of the traditional values and culture of the destination country so that is what is meant by breakdown of culture and tradition and the last one being diseases 
you know as long as people move from place to place there is a lot of risk of outbreak of disease especially contagious diseases there can be a lot of problems so you know there are a lot of problem of spreading because the migration can take place so that can be a negative impact to the destination country so these are the impact of migration on the destination country the first three are the positive impact meaning how does the de destination country benefit when people move into their country and the remaining are the negative impact Impact, meaning how does destination country suffer because of people moving into their country now the next are uh, the impact of migration again I told you impact here means effects so let's learn about the effects of migration but on the home country meaning your country of origin the first and the most important positive impact of people you know migrating from the home country going to somewhere else to work are remittances remittances are money that is sent back home let's uh, let's say money that is sent back home so remittances meaning when people leave their country and go to some other country to work they earn a lot of money and they send back home to the family so that money which is sent back home to the family uh, you know that is known as remittances and this can be a good support to the family when people migrants send in a money to the home to support the family this can help them you know achieve a good standard of living and that is how the family can also grow Be better job prospects for local meaning when they, when most of the people have left the country now there's less pressure on the jobs so locals are more likely to find jobs uh, you know that they can find that they can do then the, so that is why there is less pressure for jobs flow of knowledge and skill because most of the people have gone to the destination country to work so when they come back they can have innovative ideas they can come back home with new ideas and skills uh, which they have acquired uh, you know in, when they have gone to the destination country and they can implement those skills you know they can share those ideas and knowledge that they have or you know learned from the destination country and can be implemented to the home country and this can help the home country to grow so these are the three positive impact of migration on the home country with the positive impact there are negative impact also meaning the first being very important loss of skilled labor we need there's so many talented skilled people have left the country and gone to uh, you know some other country to work you know so that is a big loss to the home country because the skilled labor have all gone outside to work so that can be something known as brain drain when you know most of the skilled or the talented uh, you know prof uh, professionals leave the country and go to some other country to work that which is known as brain drain so that can be a negative a big negative impact for the home country population and market being the next now because you know um, the market now is not as big because most of the people have gone to the destination country have left their country and gone somewhere else to work so what is happening because of which population has declined when there's less number of people definitely less people to demand so definitely markets you know demand for goods and services will fall because of decline in the population so which ultimately affects the market and the last impact of you know uh, migration on the home country is the social and family when parents and children leave you know when parents leave children and other depend suffer the most as they lose out on the most important psychological development that they need from good parenting so this can look at a lot of problem in the family and you know it can encourage you know the children you know when they're far away from the parents that can have a negative impact on the growth of a child um, so that can be an adverse impact on the family or the society so these are some of the impacts of migration on the home country i hope you've understood the difference between home and destination country please try to learn these impacts uh, you must know impacts for both the, the home and destination even positive and negative you must know both so those are your impacts of migration on the home country so this is your video on migration if you have any questions if you have any concerns anything you've not understood first please try to re-watch the video but still if there is any problem you are unable to understand please feel free to whatsapp me or you could even email me at batu dot lama at the rate gmail dot com okay.
okay so you can email write to me if you have any questions i will surely make sure that i clarify your doubts at the earliest thank you for watching